Buenos dias, mis amigos. All right. Yesterday I did a video on Jack Van Ampey, and I hit the wrong button, and the audio, my audio, did not record. All right. So I thought, why not? Let's do it again. All right. Because I could do this a hundred times, I think, and make the same. Watch what make the same points a hundred times. All right, I'm pretty sure of that. So let's listen to what Jack and Rexella have to say. Hello and welcome to Jack and MP Presents. Oh, do we have an awful lot to cover today on with our international headlines? And the first one concerns me because it took place right here in the United States. Professor of Religion at Princeton University debunks the Book of Revelation. Elaine Pagels was a professor and is a professor of religion at Princeton University. And she gave an interview to a Christian Science Monitor contributor concerning her book entitled Revelations. Now uh, there's a plural on there, Jack. And uh, there you see it. The Q&A with Elaine Pagels, author of Revelations. Now I have some pointed questions I'm going to ask Jack in just a moment. But first of all, Jack, your impression of Dr. Elaine Pagel and uh, her interpretation. We're going to talk about in a moment. Well, you want to say something about her uh, title. First of all, she doesn't even know what it's all about. Anyone who writes me and calls it Revelations proves to me they don't know what the Bible really teaches about the book of Revelation. Singular. There it is. Revelation of the law. Okay, so, uh, first of all, uh, you know, if you... It seems to me... Now, I could be wrong. It seems to me that this lady, Elaine Pagel, Pagels, author of Revelations. So she named her book Revelations. All right, so, and Jack Van Empey is making the point that it's not the book of Revelations, it's the book of Revelation, or just Revelation. However, we see the word revelations used in 2 Corinthians 12, twice, right? We see it twice here. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. All right, so I think uh, I understand Jack. Uh, he's probably come across people who said, well, in Revelations chapter 2, well, it's not Revelations chapter 2. It's Revelation chapter 2. Big deal. All right, big deal. That's not the, that's not the battle that I would want to fight. All right, I understand what he's saying, but this lady wrote a book titled Revelations. It's a word. Now, maybe she's talking about something. I don't know. I don't know, but anyways. Revelation of the Lord Jesus okay, Jack. Christ, chapter 1, verse 1. All and right, this buddy. reveals Christ through all 22 chapters, as we're going to see. You're already wrong, sister. Well, uh -huh. you got to be careful now, Jack, because now if you're wrong, you're in the same condemnation as she is. Now, we're going to go back and forth here, and I'd like for, for Jack to give us uh, his interpretation of what he thinks about some of her answers. Were they good answers? Were they intelligent answers? Were they biblical answers, Jack, according to the Bible? Very ignorant answers. For instance, <laughs> she says, who knows about a beast with seven heads and ten horns? I do. <laughs> oh, you do? I Actually, I don't think you do, Jack, but let's find out. As you're going to see in a few minutes from now, and I'll tell you, the Bible is so plain on this thing. He says, well, it talks about lambs and dragons. Sure, when the false prophet comes to power, along with the Antichrist in Revelation 13, uh, verse 11, he has the two horns of a lamb because Jesus is the Lamb of God. So this is a Christian who defects from the faith, and he speaks as a dragon. Uh, yeah, no, it's not a Christian that defects from the faith. It's here. Um... 
let's just clarify this. Okay, oh, what in the world? Let's just clarify what this is talking about here. I think it was Revelation 13. In Revelations 13, <laughs> okay, so uh, what was it? Um, the lamb with uh, horns, he had two horns like a lamb. Okay, so talking about a beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. It doesn't say it was a Christian who defected. All right, the, now to make this real simple. All right, this is about the Roman Catholic Church. This is another description of the what is the, the fourth beast of Daniel. All right. See, you got to know this stuff. It's important. So Daniel has four beasts until the end of the world. He names the first three beasts. All right. Babylonian, Medes and Persians, and the Greek Empire. The fourth is not mentioned because it had not yet come, but we can figure it out by reading the New Testament, and we see that the Roman, that the, the Roman Empire is the fourth beast. Now, and I beheld another beast, which is the same as the first beast. All right, it can't not it cannot be after the end of the world. All right, it has to be before the end of the world. So this other beast is the transformation from the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. And it looks like a lamb, but it is not the lamb. Okay, and that's the Catholic Church poses itself, pretends to be a church of Jesus Christ, but it's not. All right, pretty obvious, pretty obvious stuff, but what... I just want to make that point. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why he said it's a Christian that defected. Make, there's no need to make that statement. It's not implied at all. Brag in Revelation 20, verse 2, which is satanic power. Mm, Jack, you're not going to believe this. Wait, what is it? Revelation what is it? 20, verse 2. The anti. <laughs> okay. Now he, the, the beast does get its power from Satan. No question about it. And verse 2, And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan bound him a thousand years. Okay. So I think his point here by quoting verse 2 is just to show that the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, Satan is all the same. That's my guess. Right? It's the only thing I can think of. Because Revelation 20 verse 2 doesn't say any of this. Dragon with satanic speaks as a dragon with satanic power, or speaks as Satan with draconic power. Verse two, which is satanic power. Mm, Jack, you're not gonna believe this question. <laughs> Whoa! The gentleman said, "What do people misunderstand about the Book of Revelation?" Now he had it right. He didn't use the plural. Oh, he got it right. And she said, a lot of liberal people think it's just crazy. And they can't understand how people have ever taken it seriously. Does God want us to take the book of Revelation seriously? I believe he does, Jack. I cannot believe those kind of answers from a professor of a religion. Listen to this. God wrote this book. 2 Timothy 3.16. All right. scripture is given by inspiration of God. Secondly, the Holy Spirit had a great part in leading men to write about it. And so he is uh, yeah, uh, the third okay. member of the Trinity. God wrote this book. That's Holy right. men of God you speak got as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. You got Jesus it, said in that John way, 16, Jack. 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. And there we go. Speak of me. But Jesus promoted this book. Didn't you get to chapter 22, verse 16, Sister Pickle? Listen to it. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things, these 22 chapters. You better change your tune, or you'll be with those liberals someday laughing, but you'll be laughing in the wrong place. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, so I, I can't let that go. All right, first of all, now he's he's right. All right, so um, for example, if any man shall take away the words of this book, the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, so right here, for I testify unto every man that hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. All right, so this is a very important book, and you, if you don't take this serious, you're in trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. All right, now, Jack here, he, he, uh, well, I forget what he says. Or you'll be with those liberals. Laughing. You'll be with those liberals laughing. All right, so first of all, let's just, <laughs> let's just, uh, Go over a couple things here. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. All right, so let's let's go. Uh, so they, if they're laughing now, they're gonna weep later. That's the idea that what Jack said that they're gonna be laughing in hell. They're not gonna be laughing in hell. Sent mine angel to testify unto you these things these 22 chapters you better change your tune or you'll be with those liberals someday laughing but you'll be laughing in the wrong place no no he i think he just fumbled his words and went with it that's what i think that's what i would think but i just want to clarify here that when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven that all the tribes of the earth will mourn. All right. In Luke 21, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. They're not going to be laughing. All right. The joke's going to be over. All right. The joking around and kidding around. And all that stuff, it's over. Revelation chapter 1. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So there's not going to be laughing going on. They're not going to be laughing. The joke's going to be over. Hey, Jake, this is serious stuff. It really is. You're never going to believe the next question that was asked to her uh, by this journalist. He said something about the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, of course. And he said, what do you think about him? And she said, well, he's not somebody who called himself a Christian, but one who knows who the Messiah is and sees himself in the line of the prophets. Unbelievable. The Apostle John, who didn't know he was a Christian. There were 16 prophets in the Old Testament. All right, no, John yeah, okay, I got to stop him right here. So, there's not elevated men, period. We are all equal, one with another. Only God is exalted above us. And Jesus is God Almighty. We are all equal. Now, when Jesus returns, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We are going to take off corruption and put on incorruption. We're going to take off mortality and put on immortality. And then... We will be equal with God. Not before then, and no man will be elevated above another man. Afterwards, not at all. After, and so because, look, because we're not in the, the life to come hereafter, we're not going to be elevated over another man, and no man's going to be elevated over us. So also right now, there is no man of God elevated above another man of God. 
none whatsoever. So there's no this idea that well Jesus was a prophet and then Muhammad was a prophet and then Joseph Smith was a prophet and these are elevated men. No, 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 no. I, I, see, right now we have false prophets. So also do we have prophets. See, we had we have uh, false apostles and we have real apostles. Some are uh, teachers, some are prophets. Oh, hold on a second. I don't know how to spell. Give me a second here. Let's just use one example and then move on. I don't I think the last time I made too long of an argument here. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We all have our um, purpose, right? We're all part of we're all part of the body of Christ. All of us that are men of God, women of God, whatever. All of us that are born of God. We all have a part, our specialty, if you will, in the body of Christ. That does not mean one man is elevated over another man at all, period. We're all equal in God. Okay? And we're just doing the will of God, and that's it. We're in the Spirit of God, that's it. We can't take credit for anything that we do, and neither these prophets, these are all men just like me and you. They're not elevated men. They didn't sit on bigger thrones than we sit on. We sit on heavenly thrones just like those gentlemen sat on heavenly thrones. There's nothing greater about them than about us. In other words, we are equal with them. In um, so I don't know. That's it. That's it. I mean, there's nothing elevated about these men. Okay. The and so I bring that up because of this idea. That, oh, well, if this guy's a prophet, he's a savior also. And that's not the case at all. These men were not saviors. These were men just like us. And you got to think about it this way. Uh, we are all kings of God. Right? Think about it this way. Here, let's go back to Revelation 1. He has made us kings and priests unto God right now we are kings of God kings unto God okay so anyways let's go name in any one of them where is he named he didn't just write the book of Revelation he wrote the gospel of John he wrote the first second and third epistles of John and Revelation five books now he wasn't a Christian he's an apostle Matthew 10 2 Here's why I know he was a Christian. The most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that That's whosoever Jesus believed said. in okay. the name should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. I think he had to be a Christian. It's good stuff. Read something wonderful like that. And you know in Revelation 4, verse 1, we hear the words, Come up hither, and that's when we go to meet the Lord in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But the ones who arrived there are singing in chapter 5. Verses 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take... Uh, hold on a second. Huh? What in the world did I just miss? No, in Revelation 4, verse 1, we hear the words, Come up hither, and that's when we go to meet the Lord in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But the ones who arrived there are singing in chapter 5. 
verses 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take the... Uh, so, this is way off. This is bizarre. Doggone it. All right, this is... Spoken to open the seals of the earth, for thou was slain at hash rate. Okay, all right, hold on a second. Back. I got to back up here, gee, many Christmas. Where are we at here? All right, deep breath. Everlasting life, John. Pay attention. 16. I think he had to be a Christian to write something wonderful like that. And you know, in Revelation 4, verse 1, we hear the words, Come up hither, and that's when we go to meet the Lord. The Come up hither. Come up hither. Come up. Is that talking about the rapture? First of all, I just, I just gotta hold on a second. And you know, in Revelation four, verse one, we hear the words "Come up hither," and that's when we go to meet the Lord in the twinkling of an eye. See, I think he's wrong. After this, I. John looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a j sardine stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne and sight like unto an emerald okay so on and on and we get a description of what he's seeing okay and then we go to revelation 5 and it's revealed that hey this is we're gonna show you the seven seals right and then of course we get to revelation 6 and then the first seal is opened and of course the lamb is the one that opens it all right and we get the the white horse the red horse the black horse and the and the pale horse okay and then we get the fifth seal all right and that's people being slain for the word of god and then the sixth seal is the end of the world and then the seventh seal is eternal life okay that's it that's seven seals it's not rocket science all right but back to Revelation 4. Revelation 4 is not the rapture. It's not the end of the world. It's not when we are caught up together to meet the Lord in the air at all. This is in reference to what we read in Revelation 1. Are right, you going to criticize somebody? You ought to know what the heck you're talking about, Jack. In Revelation 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So here we got the angel showing John things which must shortly come to pass. In Revelation 4, after this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must shortly come to pass, which must be here after. Though this is this is not at all the rapture, the end of the world, when we are caught up together with the Lord, when we are transformed into our glorified bodies. It's not that at all. This is what Revelation was said said that it was gonna do there's the angels are going to show John things which must shortly come to them. This is exactly what's going on. Jack, come on, buddy. You're way off here, man. This is not the rapture at all. And now he wants to say, well, in Revelation 5. Well, okay. Golly gee whiz. Golly gee whiz, man. Golly gee whiz. And he wants to say, <laughs> Revelation 5, well... This is when those people that were resurrected are up there. Is that what he said? Let me... Die, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. But the ones who arrived there are singing in chapter 5. There it is. They're singing in chapter 5. Glory, glory. Let's see. What are they saying? I forget. I forget what they say. 
And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou art was slain, and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kingdom, or out of every kindred and tongue, people, and nation. All right. All right. So they they sing. That's that's great. But um, this is not men who were resurrected at all. Yeah, look, you know what much? Because no man was found worthy. No man was found worthy. The only one worthy, no man in heaven or on the earth, under the earth, was able to open the book. Neither to look thereon. Nobody. Alright, so, first of all, this is not at the end of the world when we are resurrected. Second of all, Jesus is the first resurrection. The first fruit to them which slept. And John or uh, Jack even uh, throws that chapter out there. First Corinthians fifteen. All right. First Corinthians fifteen. Every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, and then afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then that's at the end of the world. So this is not the end of the world. Revelation five. It's not the end of the world. All this is doing is making an example that Jesus Christ is the only one worthy to open the seven seals. Alright, and so there's no mention at all of men being resurrected in heaven. Now that's not, that's not biblical at all. Alright. So there are not men floating up, resurrected men floating up in the air right now. And there will not be men, resurrected men, up in the air floating around for all eternity. There's that's not gonna happen. That's not implied anywhere in, at all in the Bible. Nobody has ascended up to heaven except for Jesus. Jesus has led the way for us. Okay, So he came into our flesh. He died. He came back to life, resurrected. And then he ascended to heaven with the promise that he will prepare a place for you or that he is preparing a place for us. And then when he returns, we will be caught up together with him. We will be separated from the world permanently. And the world will be destroyed permanently. And then there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And we will be set back down on this new earth with new heavens. Alright, so there is no... There is no... I don't know what's going on there. There is no, uh, you know, this idea of people in rocket ships you know or hanging out in Mars or something I, I, it's not that's the only thing I can think of imagination goes wild what are you talking about Jack don't know alright so Jack you got that wrong buddy you got that you're way off man you're way off okay so let's just go with what he's teaching here he says, okay, in Revelation 4, it's the resurrection. It's when we are resurrected into our eternal bodies. And the fifth, or chapter 5, excuse me, is those that were resurrected. Okay. And then afterward, the seven seals are opened. Okay, so the problem here is when Jesus comes back. All right, so okay, now hold on. I gotta, I gotta stomp this out. Okay, so in Revelation five, let's go to Revelation six. Let me go back. Okay, so Jack is saying that the resurrection happens and that there are people resurrected in their in their glorified bodies up in heaven. 
All right, then the seven seals are open, and people are slain for the word of God. The souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Okay, so there's continuing a continuance of killing, according to what Jack teaches. That's a huge problem. All right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's the end of the world, and we are resurrected. When we are resurrected and transformed into our glorified body, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There will be no more death. So that can't happen. This this thing here, people getting resurrected and then people dying, that, that cannot happen. It's an impossibility. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's the judgment of God. And the judgment is separating the saved from the unsaved. And the unsaved are destroyed forever. That's it. And then there's no more death. Alright, so this idea that some people will get resurrected, that's not biblical at all. That's comic book stuff. Verses 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take the book and to open the seals of earth, for thou wast slain and hast Yeah! He was slain. Jesus was killed. Yabba dabba doo! Right? I mean, yahoo! Jesus was killed. Yeah! That's good stuff right there, huh? Woo! Jesus was slain! Take the book and open the seals of earth, for thou wast slain! Yeah! We got you, sucker. We killed you. <laughs> yeah! Anybody see a problem with this? Getting excited about killing Jesus. Yeah! Well, fact of the matter is Jesus laid down his life. He didn't kill him. And hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. Out of it seems like you're more excited about Jesus being killed, being slain, than about him redeeming us. Just pointing that out. That's all I'm saying. Are worthy Jesus to take the book and to open the seals of earth, for thou wast slain. Yeah. And hast redeemed us to God by thy blood <laughs> out of every kindred tongue. You put emphasis on the wrong word, Jack. Us unto our God, kings and priests, and we're going to reign with you. You can understand this, can't Whoa. you? Whoa. Whoa. I ain't getting all excited about killing Jesus, and then you throw that one in there? Every kindred tongue, people, and nation, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, yep. and we're going to reign with you. Whoa. And we're going to reign with you. You can understand this, can't you? No. Well, now, what you're saying, Jack, is that you don't reign with Christ right now. In other words, you're making a confession that you're not saved. How can the, how in the world can you be born of God and not reign with Christ? It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Now you've heard me, if you've paid attention to anything that I've ever said, you know full well, I'm going to tell you right now, we are kings and priests unto God. Right now, I mean, the, that's what the Bible says. Right now, we are kings and priests unto God. Right now. Alright, this is parallel with what we read in Exodus 19. Alright, and we go to, <clears throat> excuse me, Revelation 20. And it says, they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. It doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years, does it? It says they, meaning us, that are priests of God. We reign with him right now. And has made us, has made us, not will make us in the future, has made us right now priest of God and right now we reign with Christ we're saved 
were secured, were sealed, sanctified forever, right now. Not in the future, unless you, you're not saved. You plan on being saved, you think about it. I might, I might be saved, uh, I might change my mind and believe in Lord Jesus Christ in the future. Right now, I just don't know. Well, if you wait, buddy, you ain't gonna wait. It's gonna be too late. Right? <laughs> don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. So, man, terrible, terrible error. Catch it. It's very simple. It is not a crazy book. Yeah, the book Revelation no, is. The not book's not crazy. The book is not crazy. People are. A negative book, Jack. It's one that gives us hope. Chapter 4, verse 1 is come up here. That's talking about the rapture. No, it's not, Turn Rex. Here's Sella. Revelation 19, 11, on a white horse to rule and reign for a thousand years. Revelation 20, verse 4, that's our hope. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. First of all, Revelation 20 makes no mention of the word rule. i got to point that out. Whenever I hear somebody say, rule and reign for a thousand years, I know they're not getting that from the Bible. I know they're just echoing what they heard another man say. A rule and reign is not in Revelation 20. Period. <laughs> Don't you trust God? I mean, really, why are you repeating the words of man and not believing the words of God? It's incredible. All right, so Jack here and Rexella have both admitted that they are putting their hope into a thousand years. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, for me, you can take that thousand years and flush them in the toilet. Flush that thousand years right into the toilet. I want no part of it. And I mean that. I My hope is in eternal life. Life that lasts forever. This thousand years, the only reason people preach this idea of a thousand years after Jesus comes is because they want a thousand years so they can have sexual relations with whoever they want. That's the only reason. Some people are honest enough to admit it. Most are not. That's the sole reason, the only reason that they teach this idea and there's a lot of people out there that do 99 percent of all the preachers in the churches on the pulpits today preach this idea that there's coming a thousand year period after the end of the world they're all perverts every single one of them every single one of them and not one of them believe in the Word of God, not one of them. Alright, because there's, I just showed you, there's no mention of rule and reign in Revelation 20. Alright, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Alright, so here, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are changed forever. Not for a thousand years, we are changed forever. There is no more death. All right. Jesus himself says that in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of heaven All right, so they're not having any more children after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven All right. when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and when the world and when this world comes to an end then there is no more sex and the world passes away in the sex thereof that's one way to read it all right there is no more sex period therefore there are there's no more children and there's no more death there's no more death 
So you can't have unsaved people living after this world comes to an end. The only reason, because this isn't in the Bible anywhere, the only reason they teach this is because they want a thousand years of what they think will be guilt sex or guilt free sex and this is all in the Bible I'm not just making this up out of thin air all right I'm not just whistling Dixie here this is exactly what the Bible says will happen in the last time in the last days Jude Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. This is not in vain. This is not a verse in vain. Oops. First Peter chapter 2, or Second Peter chapter 3, I don't know. Somewhere in the Bible it says, knowing this first, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. These guys are scoffing and mocking the Word of God and trying to impl implement the sexual fantasy of a thousand years into the Word of God. And it's just not there. And they fool a lot of people. And the whole world's fooled, right? I mean, if 99% of the preachers that stand on the pulpit are teaching this, they're all fooled. Alright, so again, I'm not just making this stuff up. This is not just my imagination. It's right there in the Bible. This is exactly what they say will happen, and it's happening right now. Okay, and uh, they're all wrong. Obviously, I, <laughs> I mean the stuff that Jack's teaching doesn't even resemble the stuff that I read in the Word of God in the Holy Bible. All right, let's go. Rain for a thousand years. Revelation twenty verse four. That's our hope. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, friends, when I think of the Book of Revelation. I think about something that's very, very outstanding in my mind. It has to do with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. All right. The first horse, of course, is... Four? I, I guess I never thought about that. The four horsemen of the apocalypse? Have to put. All right, what the heck? See, no, no, no. It don't work. It don't work. It don't work because the fifth seal is what we're seeing today, and today is not the apocalypse. The apocalypse, I thought the apocalypse was the end of the world. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. That's what I thought. That's what I always thought. The apocalypse was like the this great here, I gotta look this up, man. I don't know nothing. Does she say apocalypse? Because I don't know how to spell apocalypse. Apoc you apocalypse is the white horse and it talks about a world leader of a world government no, what wait a second wait a second now first of all apocalypse right there apocalypse apoco apaca apocalypse the final or the complete final destruction of the world yeah so that that's not happening right now I mean is it you have to really get crazy to try to even make that argument. Alright. 
so the fifth seal is what we're seeing right now it's not the end of the world yeah the sixth seal is the end of the world when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven when the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken this is the end of the world we're not there yet all right so the white horse is jesus christ lord and savior all right, it's not, it's not the Antichrist. There's something wrong with your heart when you teach this stuff. All right, the first horse, of course, is the white horse. And Jesus. it talks about a world leader of a world government. No Wait, where are you seeing that at, sister? Just making stuff up. Authoritarians. And that has to do with the Obama administration. No. Now, you know, Jack, Good I'm coming God up here Almighty. at something. I would like for you to read, if you would please, and it's on the screen right oh, now. Oh, listen every word, this is dynamite. Abdullah says that months into the Arab Spring, he and other Egyptian freedom fighters realize that the Western powers and the Obama administration have put their support behind the new authoritarians. Through their proxies in the United States, the Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamic of Tunisia, the Justice Party of Morocco. You spend more time quoting these articles than you do the Word of God. And maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you don't understand any of it. Uh, there's more I want to talk about with Jack. But that's, I think I've gone on too long. Alright, maybe I'll make a part two. Maybe I won't. If anybody has any questions, any comments, let's hear them. And I look, what I'm teaching here can't be refuted. All right, cannot be refuted. I've got the power and the strength of God in the words that I teach because they are from God. 